Welcome back after the break, guys. And let's continue looking at question number three and the revision exercises. Now, question three asks, refer to the residential areas. Now, what does residential mean? It's where families live. It's where people live. At Sea Point and at the Malay Quarters. Now, let's just quickly have a look at our diagram again, just to establish where they are and if we can get any clues regarding them. There's the Malay Quarters, and there's Sea Point. Now, obviously, the difference, well, I can see over here on this diagram, Sea Point is situated next to the coast, and Malay Quarters is just on the fringes of the CBD. Now, let's quickly go and have a look what questions can we expect. Classify the two areas as low-income areas, respectively. Now, low-income and high-income. High-income is people that earn more, low-income is people that earn less. Now, I will definitely say that the Malay quarters are a low-income area and that the C point is a high-income area. And I will discuss it with you now with the reason why we established that. Explain your classification of C point in question A by referring to the evidence. Now, first of all, when we look at the evidence, where do we see point? It's next to the ocean. So your property stands are going to be much more expensive to have ocean view than places that further away. So the reason why I'm saying that is because it's got sea view and the stands are larger. The property sizes is larger than at the Malay quarters. The reason why I'm saying that the Malay quarters are low income is because it's on the zone, sorry, it's where the zone of DK is, it's just on the outside of the CBD, and the property sizes is smaller. So it's going to cost a lot and a lot more money to buy a property in Seaview than in an area such as the Malay Quarters. If you look at our next question, there's an open space around the Malay Quarters. It may attract migrants. Migrants is people that move from one area to another area and from the rural areas. Now, if you quickly have a look at an open space, that they're referring to. There's the Malay quarters, and as you can see, there's an open space over there and over there. Now, the question states that it can attract migrant workers from rural areas. If you look at it, it's because people move away from the rural areas. What is likely to develop here as a result of this migration? Immediately what's going to happen, because the city of Cape Town do not have enough property available, so informal settlements might develop over there. Now, what is an informal settlement? It is a settlement that lacks basic needs and services. Now, unfortunately, rural urban migration is happening at a very fast rate that the government can't make educate plans well in advance because there's too many migrants moving over a short period of time. So the result is that many informal settlements can jump up around these areas. And unfortunately, it's going to create problems for the city of Cape Town. Explain the occurrence of this development. 
Now, why does it take place? Now, these migrate, migrants are unskilled workers, so many of them are uneducated. As people that's unskilled, they don't have any qualifications, they used to be laborers on farm areas or wherever they come from. So they're uneducated, they can't get a formal job. And that means they can't, or they won't be able to support themselves by paying rent. So unable to rent a flat, even in a place like Malay Quarters, it's low income, but they can't afford it. So what do they do? They rather build their own houses out of weak materials such as tin, wood, and sink. So the reason for this development is because they're unskilled, they can't find a proper job, and they won't be able to afford rent to get their own place. So they rather create an informal sector. Not informal sector, informal settlement. Easy to get confused. Be careful for that. State two reasons for these migrants leaving the rural areas. Now, once again, we're going back to settlement issues. It's that rural urban migration. And we talked about the push factors and the pull factors. Now, in, this, in this case, they're talking about the push factors. Why is the migrants leaving the rural areas? It might be because the farming areas experience a drought. Whoops, just check my spelling over there. And unfortunately, when the drought is being experienced, the farmer might pack up, sell his farm. So many of these people will be unemployed. Another reason, slash flooding. Flooding might have occurred as well. Another reason why these people move for better services, such as schools, for example, such as hospitals, is another reason why people leave the rural areas. Now, one of the biggest reasons as well, many farms becomes mechanized means they don't need people that much anymore they use machinery so unfortunately many of the workers will lose their jobs now what problems are associated with this development now remember there's a great influx of people moving to this urban areas now all of a sudden many of them will be unemployed because they don't have a necessary skill to work what can happen crime can increase Because there's lack of services such as sewage and clean drinking water, we will find that pollution will increase. And believe it or not, because of this rural urban migration, it can lead to unemployment so the unemployment rate will go up because there's people moving from the rural areas to the urban areas but unfortunately because they're not skilled they can't get any jobs and that can lead eventually to social problems Now the next question is a paragraph question. If you look at the mark allocation, please, when you do get a question paper, a question like this in your question paper, make sure you answer it in paragraph form and not in bullet form. Now the question states, you are part of a task team to set up by the government to provide suggestions on how to slow down the movement from rural areas as well as small towns from cities and rather attract the people to stay there. In a short paragraph, no more than 12 lines suggest 
discuss your ideas. Now, first of all, we need to stop this rural urban migration. Now, first of all, we need to approach the people who's moving away from these rural areas to urban areas. And we need to distinguish their needs. What do the people in the rural areas want? The fact that they want to move to the urban areas. What can we bring towards them that so that they don't need to go to the urban areas? So we need to go and have a look at their needs. And what do we need to go and have a look at? We're going to look at their skill sets. And talents. So we need to utilize what they can do and improvise to what they are good as, what they basically can do very well to do it over there. So we need to look at their needs, their skill sets and talents. And then small towns can advertise, even if it happens in small towns. Small towns can advertise or promote activities that's taking place. For instance, let's use Cape Town as an example. There's many small towns surrounding Cape Town. Pole, for example, a very small town 50 kilometers from Cape Town, can promote the town of Pole with their school rugby. Pole Boys, Pole's Gymnasium, some of the best schools in South Africa regarding rugby, and they can attract people to come and join them when these two schools play rugby against one another. Another example, Franz Huck, renowned for its wine, maybe they can have markets every Friday, every Saturday, over weekends, so people can, can travel to Franz Huck and enjoy the markets and have some of their quality wines. Another reason what we can do is we can basically open retirement villages in these small towns. So that means there will be an influx of people to come and visit the people that's in a retirement village. And not last but not least, probably the most important one, the services from the government needs to be improved. Infrastructure needs to be improved, like the roads, for instance, the service delivery, for instance, electricity, clean drinking water needs to be improved in these areas. If these, all of these suggestions can take place, I'm surely that many people, instead of migrating to urban areas, will rather stay in their rural communities. Let's quickly have a look at our next questions. Now, the next question is just to provide the correct term for the following phrases. A settlement where only primary activity takes place. Now, primary, what happens in primary activities is usually rural settlements. What do we say? It's unifunctional. It's only one activity taking place. If you look at urban areas, it's usually secondary and tertiary activities, it's multifunctional. Now, urban settlement, which consists of a main city with surrounding depending towns. Now, for instance, Cape Town is the example. There's Cape Town, there's Paul, Stellenbosch, Franz Hook, many surrounding towns. It's like a central place city and that is known as a metro polis. Now the increase in the number of people living in urban areas, now keep in mind there's people that's already in the urban areas, but what happens? The number of the population is expanding because of family sizes, is known as urban, growth. A resource from the earth which cannot be replenished that 
is non-renewable. resource such as gold, platinum or coal. The economic sector which involves distribution of information and accessing of information is known as the quaternary sector. For instance, IT Google, etc. Okay, at 4.2, match the columns by simply writing the correct term in column A to column B. Now, this is what we've learned over settlement and economic geography in the previous lessons. Now, if you look at the junction town, match the correct description of a junction town, A will be number five, six, seven, eight. The zone of decay will be number seven. An area around the CBD with mixed functions. Number C, centrifugal forces, will be number three, Right opposite it, the reasons why people leave a CBD or city. Now we've already established why many people leave the CBD or cities. It's because decentralization, they move away, because of the land value of the properties are too expensive or it might be too congested for them. The intensive farming will be number two, Farmland with a high carrying capacity, that for example is like poultry, chicken farms. E, the SDI, Spatial Development Initiative, will be number four. Plans to improve the peripheral areas. How can we improve the areas? How can we make it more industrial with secondary activities to be more profitable? Stay tuned after the break for some more activities where we can learn a bit more.